Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this Blitz Chess postmortem video. This is a postmortem of my uh, Blitz Chess game number uh, 107, where I, I was white. I kicked off with e4, and my opponent played the Scandinavian defense, which is, uh, you can see in the opening book, a bit unusual. Um, but I play this myself sometimes. Oh, I'll back up. Back up one move. And um, if you look at uh, the top moves, c5, the Sicilian, e5, the classical going into many different openings. e6, the uh, French defense, c6. The uh, Karakhan, d6, that's a modern defense. Knight f6, the Elekhan's defense. And uh, g6 even, <laughs> all more popular than d5. But d5 is uh, quite playable. And uh, I usually play the line after takes, which is the most common move. I usually play the line with knight f6, the second choice here. Um, you get to recapture the pawn with the knight and you get a good position. If black tries to hold on to that pawn with a move like um, c4, you undermine it with the c6, and it's a, a good gambit. You, you get a lot of play for the gambit. Um, but you, you can just grab it right away, so you're not down material. You just lose the tempo on the queen, and usually the queen goes to a5. Um, queen to d6 is also a popular move, it looks like, and queen d8 is the third choice here. Not so common. And um, I play h3, which is an unusual move. Um, but if you look at the evaluation from a uh, chess engine perspective, it's not an awful move. It's a little bit slow. Uh, so anyway, I'm out of the book after h3, so let's just look at the notation tab. Um, because queen d8 is not the, the best move here, I get, I get quite a good position out of the opening, even with a move like h3 thrown in. Um, you can see this evaluation pretty strongly favors white. This is more, more than the usual opening advantage. And I'm just making normal uh, developing moves here. Um, and right there, queen d2 maybe was less than precise. Uh, looks like bishop d3 is a good move here. Um, you know, it's always weird to, to play a move like that where it's just going to get traded off. But uh, He's wasted a move developing the bishop and setting up this pawn triangle. So if you waste a move developing your bishop and then they get traded, um, it's, uh, you're, you're sort of even in terms of development. And remember, he wasted moves with his queen. So after that trade, if you play bishop to uh, d3 and he takes and you take, uh, you've got three pieces developed plus the queen, and he's only got one piece developed. And you have a pawn in the center, and his pieces are uh, his pawns are claiming less space. So that would be... Um, the best way to play, bishop d3 there. Um, but the way I play, you know, it's not uh, not like it's losing. It's just giving away some of that advantage. Um, when he trades, though, uh, we get back into that situation. It says uh, knight e4 is the best move here. Yeah, I get into trouble with the knight e4 type move. Um, in fact, that was what I was afraid of, was knight e4. Uh, that's why I put the bishop there. I wasn't particularly trying to trade that bishop. I just needed to stop knight e4. And they end up putting the knight on d5. And now... Um, I need to play the bishop back to d2 to keep my edge. See, I still have a decent edge here. But I played the bishop to g3. The bishop was under attack by the knight, so didn't need to do that. I wasn't worried about the exchange here. That's in my favor. Um, but there's an interesting moment coming up here. And uh, I was leaving the chess engine on for this. I guess I could have tried to turn it into a tactical quiz. But there was a lot of, a lot of points I wanted to look at in this game with the engine. So uh, I'm just going to leave it on. So after queen a5, it's about even. And um, I castle, which is one of the top moves here. It looks like I have no choice but to give up a pawn here. But uh, what's funny is that uh, the natural move, knight takes c3, is a mistake. And watch this. I take back, and he takes back, and now the evaluation suddenly is uh, very strongly in favor of white. It says I should play rook a to b1, which I did. It's a natural move, putting on the open file, hitting a loose pawn. And he plays the move b5, and... Um, now it says, um, yeah, bishop takes b8. This is, this is the tactic I missed. So what's up with bishop takes b8? Or even a4. So all these moves, uh, or rook b3. I was thinking about rook b3, but I thought he would just advance the pawn. Rook b3, bishop b4. Yeah, it's hard to see what the advantage was. But um, so let's let's follow this line with a4. That that worked out to be the top move after a while. Um, you might think, well, uh, can't white? First of all, he can't take with the queen because the queen's defending the bishop, right? So that's that's straightforward. But what if he takes with the pawn? This is what I missed. Um, 
the rook and the bishop are concentrating on that square. So this loses a piece. <laughs> so if he can't take that pawn, uh, what can he do? He can't move the queen anywhere because he needs to stay defending the bishop. Um, the engine recommends just developing with knight d7. And then I can grab this pawn. And uh, what, rook c8? If he tries to take back, what's wrong with just taking back? Oh, it loses the pawn. Yeah, I can just play rook takes b5 and harass the queen and maybe even pick up this bishop. So he can't take back. <laughs> so rook c8, uh, getting in position to defend the, the bishop. And then b takes c6. And uh, so white's just doing really well all of a sudden. So uh, if we go back to this uh, opening position here, this was the position in the game. Um, I need to recognize that there's a threat here on the knight as well as this threat on the bishop. And the combination of those threats means that I can play a move like a, a4 here and just undermine things. Oh, now it likes even the move a3. So anyway, uh, <laughs> pretty much anything but what I played. I played the move bishop d6. And, uh, well, I still have a pretty good advantage through here. So, uh, and he plays b4. And once again, there's this uh, tactic. Um, this is kind of interesting, too. I take here. He takes. And then I can just take the bishop. <laughs> Because if he takes the queen, which is the best move, check. King goes here, check. And I've got uh, two rooks and a knight against a queen. So uh, that's material up. Two rooks are roughly equivalent to a, a queen. And then I've also got a knight. So uh, he gets a pawn or two for his trouble. But uh, yeah, so that, that was uh, doubly, a double chance. I had that chance twice. And I missed it both times. Sort of the same idea, just taking advantage of this uh, b8 square and the triangulation of these pieces. Um, so I thought that was interesting. Um, I played knight e5, and um, so I'm keeping an advantage, but uh, not not really. Um, okay, once again, bishop takes b8 should be played here. Same idea. The um, king is still not castled, and uh, yeah, let's let's back up. That was the other point. You know, I had this feeling that there was something suspicious about his position here. You know, I've castled. I've got all my pieces out. Uh, he hasn't castled. His knight's not developed. And he's making these uh, aggressive moves with his pawns. And, uh, you know, a lot of times when you have that combination of circumstances, uh, there is there is a tactical refutation. You just have to be patient and uh, spend the time to search it out and find it. So, so definitely uh, black is played kind of fast and loose there and he deserves to be punished for his uh, for his liberties and uh, and unfortunately I didn't do it okay but that's uh, that's chess and so now after the exchange here my advantage is back to uh, a normal opening advantage and now uh, knight takes d4 it thinks is a good move I, I thought that was working out pretty well here and um, so but I don't play this quite in the best way. Um, yeah, I, I should have been a little more uh, aggressive with the bishop. I could have, well, first of all, I could have thrown in a check here and, and discomfited his king. Um, but uh, putting the bishop, oh, I like bishop a3. I was thinking bishop d6 might be better. Okay, so bishop a3, and he castles, and then I don't have that check anymore. Uh, but I still have an advantage, and I keep it for a little while longer. Um, but right around here, I mean, he gets a really good knight on c4, and I, I just sort of have run out of ideas. I don't know how to improve my position. Could I have prevented knight c4 in any way? Rook to b5. Yeah, getting this rook active before he plays knight c4, that's an idea. Start attacking this pawn. That, that uh, limits where he can go. He could come in with the king, couldn't he? Rook b5. Couldn't he play king up to c6? Rook takes a5. Ah, it was a fork. I mean, it's not exactly a fork, but um, I was increasing the pressure on the e-pawn, which is still adequately defended, but also attacking the uh, a-pawn. And if he moves the a-pawn forward like that, then um, bishop to c5. Ah, yeah, this is the idea I had in the game. Start putting pressure on the knight. King c6, and rook d to b4. 
It's getting kind of tense here. <laughs> now knight to c4. The knight needs to get out of there. He's, he's being threatened. And what have I got? Bishop to d4. Um, well, my pieces are more active and uh, pawns are being threatened. It doesn't look like uh, there's an immediate win of a pawn, but you can see how this is a better position than what I got in the game. I played bishop to c5 here and here instead of rook to b5. Bishop c5. And he gets his knight to c4. And now uh, it's an even game. I've lost my advantage. And uh, and I, I am gradually getting worse and worse. Now it's slowly swinging to black's favor. Um, because I, I just don't have a plan. And when you start moving planlessly... Uh, and I was getting low on time at this point. Anyway, yeah, you start just pushing the wood around. Um, and your opponent still has time in his thinking. Then uh, it's often a recipe for disaster. Your position just slowly goes downhill. And that's what happened here. And now, uh, yeah, with that rook, with that rook uh, b4 move, it looks like that was the final straw. Rook a1, you know, that's a very joyless kind of position, just hopelessly defending that pawn, and your pieces are all tied up. So I tried to play actively, but uh, it turns out that is just losing. I'm too slow. I get some counterplay, but um, it's just not fast enough uh, because I can't stop him from queening that pawn. I can pick up a few pawns, but I have a long way to march with these pawns, and he has time to uh, stop me from queening. And, uh, you know, I keep trying until, uh, <laughs> until the end, but uh, here is one other point. Sometimes in a case like this, after pawn takes, you can try pushing ahead with uh, h6. Um, and now the king is too far away, but uh, he can just come back with the rook. And that's just winning too. So I just uh, was, my pawns were too far away from being a threat uh, to make that uh, a realistic uh, counter, counter play uh, shot. So uh, anyway, as it was, I, I took and he moved his king over there and then I resigned at this point. So I uh, hope you guys got something out of that. Leave any comments you have in the section below and I will see you again later. Bye.